Hello again, uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, today's topic will be a continuation or an update on COVID-19. This specifically is one of the latest controversies with regard to COVID-19, specifically on the so-called COVID-19 variants. Why do they occur and what do we need to do? So this is based on one of my subscribers message to me. If I can talk to them specifically among my diabetic patients because they're worried about the so-called new COVID variant. We all know that if you look closely at COVID-19, SARS-CoV-2 is actually a strain that causes COVID-19. And this SARS-CoV-2 over time develop variants. And it's the World Health Organization that gathers all this information. And then the World Health then assess the changes of this virus new strain, new, new variant in terms of transmissibility, clinical presentation and severity. They are also gather information whether this new variant has an impact on countermeasures, including diagnostics, therapeutics, and the efficacy of the vaccines that we're having. So one such mutation at first came out around February of 2020. This mutation is far different from the first SARS-CoV-2 found in China. And this basically over a period of several months, became the predominant mutation or variant that replaced the initial strain. So that by June 2020, this variant became the dominant form of the virus that was circulating globally. Then came a lot of different clusters, but some of them were no longer considered um, use-worthy because most of these variants did not actually appear to affect transmissibility or severity. And this cluster, for example, found in Denmark, appeared not to have spread widely. Until December 14 of 2020, when the World Health Organization reported a variant referred to as the UK variant. We were worried specifically among my diabetic patients because we know that as a diabetic, you're at increased risk of developing COVID-19 infection. However, to reassure everyone, preliminary analysis of this new UK variant indicate that there is no change in disease severity or occurrence of reinfection between this UK variant compared to the other SARS-CoV-2 viruses circulating. So what's the impact of these new COVID variants? Now, as we know, all viruses, including SARS-CoV-2, can change over time. In fact, they mutate, but most without a direct benefit to the virus itself. In fact, some of this mutation results in limiting its propagation. However, we have to remember that the potential for this virus to mutate further increases when there is increased frequency of human infection. So the more and more people are getting infected with COVID-19, the more chances for this virus to mutate. Therefore, reducing transmission of SARS-CoV-2 by using established disease control methods will continue to be the critical aspect to the global strategy to reduce the occurrence of mutations that will eventually have a negative public health implication. What we know of this new UK variant is that based on modeling exercises, they have estimated that this new UK variant has up to 70% more transmissibility, meaning it's more transmitted than previously circulating form of the virus. So the fear of this possibility is that if this virus variant spreads further worldwide, that the number of new infections 
can spiral out of control. So what happens with this new COVID variant among those people who already got vaccinated? We all know that since the number of mutations compared with the overall viral genetic material is still low, it is theorized that the UK variant is not yet expected to be less susceptible to, be to the currently available vaccines. So meaning, we all know that we have vaccines for the initial SARS-CoV-2, but even with these new variants, we believe that the vaccine will still be protective. Although subsequent SARS-CoV-2 variants in the future may eventually render the current vaccines less effective. And therefore, this is where our scientists will have proper monitoring of these viruses because they can keep track of the virus vaccine efficacy and tweak the vaccines to retain the potency against new emerging variants or strains. So at the present time, what needs to be done is that if we want to prevent these variants from spreading in our own locality, I think our government has already stopped the um, borders for foreign countries or foreign, or foreign citizens, specifically from UK, from entering our country. So in our part, first, it is very important that we continue to use the usual minimum health standards of mask, face shield, and physical distancing. It is believed that this new variant, variant, which is still transmitted the same way, is that with the same measures that we're doing now, it will continue to work. It is our advice that we all know that the combination of using a mask, a face shield, and physical distancing will continue to protect us against further being infected or transmitting the virus. Second, it is very important that if we want to keep the number of infections low, since its new infection is a new opportunity to for the virus to mutate, it is our, we play a part to reducing this uh, transmission of this virus by staying home. So the bottom line is the increased transmissibility of this new strain definitely can have an impact on COVID-19 disease hospitalizations and deaths, particularly the older age group and particularly among those comorbidities. And this is where my patients with diabetes, with chronic cardiovascular disease, with kidney disease are at increased risk. However, COVID-19 vaccine will continue to be our hope as experts believe that this vaccine will continue to protect us against this new strain. It is therefore my appeal to everyone to let us help keep this infection rate of this new variant low by please following the proven safety protocol to prevent COVID-19 from mutating and spreading. It is con uh, let's continue to disseminate information from proper sources. Try to avoid using the social media of spreading fake news and pseudoscience because the best defense for COVID-19 spread up to now is proper information dissemination. The best protection up to now against COVID-19 will continue to be the face mask the face shield and social distancing. So if you like my video, please click subscribe and notification bell to be notified for new videos. I hope uh, I have shared with you some important updates on this new UK strain of COVID-19. Hopefully you will continue to um, observe these proper safety protocols that if in case this UK variant strain is already in our country, we can continue to prevent its spread. With that, thank you very much. 
and please click on some of these um, link on my previous videos regarding COVID-19. With that, thank you very much.